sir. Can you tell me what the next town is? Aberdeen. Aberdeen? Not Scotland, Illinois. The Scott settled it. That's how come it got the name. Just two miles over that rise there. Pretty big town now. Big enough to have a, a good doctor? I hope to tell you. Man or animal, Doc Davis is the best. Got his office right across the street from the barber shop. Can't miss it. Thank you, sir. Just a minute. That bridle. If my eyes are as sharp as I think they are, you're a southerner. That's right. Well, now, ain't that funny? Here I am headed south, and here you are headed north. Kind of evens things up. From what I hear, you're going in the wrong direction, mister. I hear there's a lot of money to be made down there. I don't know anything about scavenging. Scavenging? You're pretty huffy for grayback, ain't you? The war's over, mister. <laughs> I can do for thee? Oh, I don't know. Then what is it you want from me? You both look good and healthy. I'd like you to examine my boy. He's a fine looking lad. What's their name, son? David. D David Chandler. Thee tell me, son. Doctor, he can't talk. Oh. Would you mind if I had a look at this, son? Oh, I don't like doctors, I take it. Hmm? I'm not the first he's been to, I can see that. Well, I suppose he's tired of having a lot of snoopy old men looking down like clothes, eh? Come on, I'm, I'm not going to hurt thee. Come along now. That's a gun. Open their mouth. No, wider, son. Wider. Ah, that's better. How long has he been this way? A year. How did it happen? He had a shock. Wait outside, son. What did the other doctor say? What do you say, doctor? Can you help him? Mm, this isn't as simple as a broken arm or a broken leg. This is different. Come to the point, doctor. The point is that this is something none of us know much about. Some doctors claim it isn't in the throat at all, but up here. Mr. Chandler, sometimes I wish I were a minister instead of a doctor. A minister could give the hope. A doctor could only give the facts. You mean it's hopeless? No, no, no. There's always hope. And faith? Does thee have faith, Mr. Chandler? Some. Because well, they'll need a lot of it, or they'll grow awfully bitter. And bitterness can become a bad habit. Same as war. Hmm. Of course, there's an outside chance that he can be helped. Have any of the other doctors suggested any kind of treatment? No. An operation might help, an operation by the right man. Are you, Doctor? No, 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 no. I, I, I wouldn't try that kind of surgery. I was thinking of an old colleague of mine. Well, you think he can? Maybe. But it's no use thinking about it. He's in Minnesota with a Dr. Mayo. Whereabouts in Minnesota? Rochester. What's his name? Strauss, Dr. Eli Strauss. Strauss, Strauss. 
But hold on. He's not going off just on my say-so. Wouldn't you? I don't know, but I think thee would. Mr. Chandler, take my advice. Make the best of what thee has. Will you write and tell him we're coming? Of course. I can see it's no good talking to thee. He's a stubborn man. I... I can't pay you now, but I'd like to know what I owe. Is money the only way to pay for something? The gates of heaven are open wide to a poor man. I, I'd have no trouble getting in. Thank you, Doctor. Don't thank me now. They may want to damn me after they gets there. Got to go to Minnesota, David. There's a doctor there. I know how you feel, son, but we got to keep trying. He may be the one we're looking for. I knew you'd understand. Come on. Come on, Lance. my sheepdog, Pop. This time, David, we'll need food. Good food. I know. Thank you, Mr. Schumacher. Good day, sir. What can I do for you? My boy and I were just passing through. I need a few things. Well, I could judge that. Can you judge silver? Sterling? Thirty dollars worth. Not anymore, they ain't. Maybe before the war. A lot of silver coming up north lately. Well, it's worth more now, but I won't argue with you. What'll it barter for? Mm, say, ten dollars worth? Twenty. Split the difference with you. How's that? Fifteen dollars will buy a lot of groceries. A whole case of candy. <laughs> That's the best you can do. The best? Got to leave myself a little room for profit. Pick out what you need and we'll tote it all up. <coughs> What's your running? What happened? Leave that dog alone. Well, we seen the dog running loose in the alley and we figured he's a stray. Well, he's not. Our mistake, I guess. Shut up, Tom. Come on, David. Just a minute. You don't think we're trying to steal him, do you? That's strong talk in sheep country. I don't think anything. I just don't want any trouble. You one of them graybacks? <laughs> well, sure he is. Look at them Wellington boots. 
I don't like to talk to people's backs. I ask you something. Yes. Yes. What do you mean, yes? The name's Burley. Jeb Burley. All right, Mr. Burley. I'm from the South. That's what you want to know. Come on, David. Wait a minute. I'd like a little respect. I told you before, I don't like people I'm talking to to walk away from me. Look at me. You look at me when I talk to you. I'm looking, but I don't see anything. Come on, David. Come on, Jeff. Let's get out of here. Not so fast. You just don't go around accusing people of stealing. How do I know he's your dog? Maybe you stole him yourself. Whose dog is he, boy? I told you he was mine. I want the boy to tell me. Whose is he? Talk up, boy. It's mad at you, can't you? Huh? My name is David Chandler of Atlanta, Georgia. I cannot speak. I don't expect much from your brother, but I certainly do from you. How many times have I got... What do you want me to do? Just stand there and let that grayback scum insult me? Is that what you want? Stop your shout. What do you mean, stop? Stop it, stop it! Well, he started it, Pop. Well, maybe he did and maybe he didn't. Did he hurt you? Give me a drink. <laughs> I think he needs one more than you do. <laughs> what happened here? Gus looks like the, the Reb had been picking on my boys. He smells drunk, doesn't he? I don't mean he is. We better let the judge figure this one out. You come along, too. Your father? Well, come on, boy. Let's see what this is all about. Can I help you, Leonard? Come on. Up you go. Oh, no, no. You know, I've been meaning to come over and have a little talk with you the way I used to with your father. Your sheep were over yesterday. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about that. See, uh, Leonard, that's, uh, that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. I just don't have room enough for my sheep anymore. You know, that little dirt farm that you run, you got me all boxed in there. I'm going to be needing a lot more space. Excuse me, Harry, you're in my way. Now, I'd say it's the other way around. Get out! Get out, boy! Are you sobered up enough to testify? I wasn't drinking, Your Honor. All right, we'll drop the drunk charges for now. You say they were stealing your dog, huh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How about it, Jeb? The Reb here says you were stealing his dog. He's a liar. It's just the same to you, Your Honor. My name's Chandler. All right, Mr. Chandler. <clears throat> How do you explain the fact that nobody ever saw Tom or Jeb with your dog? The marshal here says your boy had him all the time. He was mistaken, Your Honor. Are you questioning the marshal? If he says your boy had the dog, your boy had the dog. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Now we'll go on to the next charge. That's uh, assault. Now, uh, did Jeb Burley strike the first blow, or did you? Well, it's hard to say. I don't see what's so hard about it. It seems simple enough to me. 
Either Jeb Brilliant struck the first blow or you did. That's a simple lot of wars begin before the shooting starts. Chandler, did you or did you not attack this man and throw him to the ground? Yes, sir. All right. Any witnesses, Gus? No, sir. Well, right, you can step down. Stay on your feet, Chandler, and hear the verdict. And the fact that you're a reb had nothing to do with my decision. The court has weighed your story against another man's. That's all any court in the land can do. And the way things are now, I've got to find you guilty of assault and battery and disturbing the peace. 30 days or $30. 30 days, $30. I haven't got $30. All right, then it's 30 days. Your Honor, I have a boy to look after. That has nothing to do with it. Most everybody I sentence has got children. If you give me a little time, I'll work, I'll, I'll do anything. But I can't leave the boy. I'm sorry, Chandra. You should have thought about your boy before you started drinking. The case is closed. Come on, Rev. Wait a minute. I, I'll take it easy, friend. Just a minute, Judge Morley. What is it, Leonard? Our pay is fine. What? He said it worked. Well, he can work it out at my place. Well, all right, if that's, if that's the way you want it. Yes, sir. All right, Leonard. Turn him loose. Leonard. See me in my chambers. You hold it right here. Lynn? You ask me for trouble. You're threatening me. Yep. It's always sad to see. What? Little boy trying to grow up too fast. Hmm. you ain't to do in this just to get back at the Burleys. They're getting to be big herders around here now, and I don't think that you nor nobody else can stop them. I don't want to hold anybody back. But I don't want anybody to hold me back either, the Burleys or anybody else. I'm just doing this for the boy. If you're so concerned about the boy, why don't you just take him? It wouldn't work. That's what I thought at first. But after watching him... No, you can't separate them. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. <clears throat> I tell you, I know people, especially Rebs and drunks. They're troublemakers. He doesn't look like any troublemaker to me. Besides the boy. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Have it your own way. <clears throat> Give me the fine. Give me the $30. Judge, I haven't got the money either. What's that? What's that you're saying, Lynn? I'm saying I haven't got the money. But I think I might be able to pay you $10 a month when my crop comes in. Do you mean you deliberately lied to me out there in the courtroom? I mean I just couldn't let you separate them. Now, I said I'd pay you the money, and I will. And besides, with somebody to help out, the farm will begin to pay. Oh, that farm of yours. You'd be a darn sight better off if you got rid of the place and moved into town. And do what? Be a clerk or a waitress or an overworked hired girl? No, I'll stay with the farm. Lynn, you're still a mighty handsome woman. And I won't stay young forever. This is no laughing matter. People are beginning to talk about you. And they ain't going to quit talking until you're respectably married. People. Don't tell me about people. What am I supposed to do? Fly right in the arms of the first man to offer me lawful marriage just to please them? <laughs> Poor Lynette Moore, all alone on that big farm. As though it were a crime to live alone. Because I'm a woman and not a man. I'm not a man-starved old maid, Judge Morley. Now, about the money. Leonard, you know that before the war, your father and your brother and me were very good friends. You wouldn't be doing what you were doing if they were alive today. You know, I could throw you in jail for this, for obstructing justice and taking advantage of my position. But you won't. That's not a nice place for a respectable lady either, is it, Judge? Then it, I swear to you that I have put, I, I have, oh, what's the use? <clears throat> Go on, get out of here. Get out, get out, get out. And take your reb with you. And maybe that's the worst punishment I can give both of you. Thank you, Judge Morley. Go on, get out.
Were you drunk? They said I was. I didn't ask them. I wasn't. Bitter at our Yankee justice? Let's say I'm grateful for your Yankee charity. for yourself. Come on, David. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, oh, boy. I don't want to seem to you what I'm not, Chandler. I didn't get you out of jail out of any sentiment or charity. I run a 200-acre farm here, all by myself. I raise mostly barley. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's good land. Good as you'll find anywhere. It'll take care of you, if you take care of it. A farm's hard to keep up with. You take care of one thing, and before you know it, two other things need taken care of. Like that old barn, for instance. My brother and I always meant to tear it down, put up a new one. Even my dad talked about it. Somehow, something more important always seemed to come up. <clears throat> One day, it'll just fall down. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of work to be done around here. <clears throat> there's fences to be repaired, livestock to take care of. North Field needs plowing, seed beds need sowing. Not an easy way to stay alive, Chandler. I know about farming, ma'am. Oh, then you know what I mean. Come on, boy. Come on. show you your place. I'll finish them up later. Come on, Lance. Hope I didn't scare you, Chandler. I was just trying to give you a rundown on the place. Don't worry, ma'am. You'll get your money's worth. Hmm. Come on. Well, this is it. Nothing fancy, but it's got two beds in it. You can put your belongings wherever you want. This dresser used to be mine. Everything just seems to collect dust. I've been meaning to clean up this place. Well, I'll wash the windows tomorrow and hang up some curtains. Ought to take soap and water to everything. Come on, boy. Down you go. Down you go. Come on over here, David. Let's spread out this blanket for you. It's cold around these parts at night. Your dog can stay here until we get a place fixed up for him outside. Well, that's it, I guess. Yes. What did he say? He wanted to know if this is our home. Well, you must be starved. But before you eat, you can help me finish unharnessing the horses. How's that? Ma'am. Yes? The boy wasn't part of the bargain. If there's any work to do, I'll do it. No. I said no, David. Now you go outside and look around. fuss about nothing. If that's the way you want it, Chandler, it's all right with me. That's the way, ma'am. Where were you and the boy heading? Minnesota. Any reason? It can wait a month. Look, Chandler, you don't have to stay if it's important. We made a bargain, ma'am. Let's both keep it. Proud, huh? Ma'am? Yes? 
I never thanked you. <clears throat> He's got a mind of his own. Feels useful. It's strange, but when you're around him, you never think about his being the way he is. He's happy enough. How's the work coming? Fine. The field should be ready for seeding in a few days. It's hard to make the plow dig in when the ground's so dry. It's funny how different a furrow looks when you're siding it over somebody else's plow. Even if it doesn't belong to you, it's a great satisfaction to have a straight furrow. Feels good. You didn't come in to dinner. It's still on the stove. Guess I wasn't hungry. Look, Chandler, I know I said there was a lot of work to do, but you don't have to do it all. Well, I want to do as much as I can before... before we leave, you know. Of course. Well, if you change your mind about eating, you'll know where to find it. Get in! Yours? Worse. Neighbors. I had to fence them off. They'd have run me right off my land if I hadn't. Fences won't stop them. Guns won't stop them either. They're not going to get my land. Wait. 
Let's try it without guns. Come on, David. Get on your horse. didn't have to, Chandler. The Burleys weren't part of the arrangement. I guess it's my turn to thank you. <coughs> I'll tell you, mister, I've seen a lot of dogs in my time, but that's the best show I've ever seen, and I've seen quite a few. Yes, he's a good dog. Dog? He ain't just any old dog, mister. He's a sheepdog. I've been raising him all my life, and I know one want to see one. What kennel's he from? My own. My boy raised him while I was gone. Well, you've got a purebred dog, mister. Who sired him? Lancelot. Oh, yes. The, the Georgia kennel. Well, you and me are going to talk us a deal, my friend. What do you take for him? Oh, he's not for sale. Now, wait a minute, mister. You don't have to play hard to get with me. I'm talking money right on the barrel head. Anything's for sale if the price is right. I'm afraid you're wrong this time, mister. Uh, Bates is the name. I buy sheep and I raise dogs. I don't mind telling you, you've got a champion. Excuse me, but I've got some work to do. I'll give you $150 for him. 
Close the deal right now. That's more than I paid for Berkshire Queen last year. No, thank you. $200. No, the dog is not for sale. Goodbye, Mr. Bates. What's the matter with him? Do you think I was talking through my hat? Who is he anyway, Linus? Name is Chandler. That's all I know about him. Reb? Mm-hmm. Stubborn like all the rest of them, ain't he? Now, I made him a fair deal, more than fair. He's either a rich man or a fool. Oh, he's not rich, Berm. Reb. $200 is a lot of money, Chandler. Two dollars is, if you need it badly enough. I rejoice to hear what you say, however. I rejoice to hear it. But as the sun is beginning to turn toward the afternoon sky, had we not better strike the trail again and make forward that we may get an opportunity of seeing these wonderful sisters? Harry March giving a cheerful assent. The remnants of the meal were soon collected. Then the travelers shouldered their packs, resumed their arms, and quitting the little area of light, they again plunged into the deep shadows of the forest. Well, that's the end of chapter one. We'll read some more tomorrow night. <laughs> Time for you to go to sleep. Good night, David. <laughs> This. And you? I'll miss him. Sit down, Chandler. Ma'am. Yes? I, I don't mean to seem ungrateful, but it's not good for the boy to get attached to something. It just makes it that much harder for him to leave. Minnesota? Uh, yes. Well, he's your boy, and I guess you know what's good for him, but one day you will have to grow roots again. We will, when he gets his voice back. You know, you're a strange woman, ma'am. Am I? That's not any woman's idea of a compliment. Well, not strange, exactly. It's just you're so good with kids that... Oh, I don't know. There's something about David. I guess he's just somebody very special. I didn't mean that. Oh? Oh, why haven't I ever married? Is that what you're trying to say? Sorry, I didn't mean to be personal. Are you beginning to wonder about me too, Chandler? That's why I never married. Because, well, because the right man never asked me. That answer your question? Yes, and a lot more than I was going to ask. 
Chandler, what were you before the war? Oh, nothing, rich man. That's too far back to remember. You don't want to. Sometimes you can't help it. How did it happen? Hmm? I mean, David. I wasn't there when it happened. I wish you'd tell me. We had a big house just outside of Atlanta. They shelled it. There was a big fire. His mother was killed and... Well, David saw it. That's how it happened. When I came back, everything was burned to the ground. And, well, the Union soldiers had rounded up all the children and sent them up north. I finally found David in an orphanage in, in Pennsylvania. Him and Lance. Since then, we've seen a lot of doctors and a lot of country. What was she like, David's mother? Like David, fair, blue-eyed, good wife, wonderful mother. Everything a man could ever ask for. Not good to remember that either. You better eat. There's nothing as unappetizing as cold stew. You're so right, ma'am. Stroke, David, the paint will run. Careful now. Just a little mistake, and you make a B out of it. That's fine. Now the E, and you're all done. Hello, Lily. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. Awful oh, hot riding out of that, son. Got something cool to drink? Water or cider? Cider. Nothing better than the juice of the apple, uh, unless it's the juice of the berry. <laughs> Well, friend, I've been wondering when they'd be coming in to see me. Must be three weeks. I've been working. I've heard all about thee and Jeb Burley. Of course, I can't condone thy fighting, but uh, if they had to give someone a black and eye, I'm glad it was his. <laughs> How does thee like working for Lily? She's been good to us. Ah, Come on in, doctor. She's a fine girl, that one. I've known her ever since she was that high. About as big as thy boy. How is he doing? Fine. How is he getting along with Lilith? Fine. Doctor, you didn't come out here just to ask questions. What is it? Chandler, I have something they may consider good news, but I don't know. I'm always tempted to withhold it from thee. Well, what do you mean? Thank thee, Lilith. I mean this letter. In all conscience, I ought to read it to thee. It's from Dr. Strauss. What does he say? It's been exciting working out here, Reverend. <laughs> That's what you always call me. Uh, and is he? Uh, the boy's case interests me enormously. The symptoms you describe sound like hysterical paralysis. I have treated six cases just like it and have had good results with three of them. So you see, there is a 50 50 chance I might be able to help the boy. Do doctor, Tom will take a chance. No, there's more to the letter, Chandler. However, I plan to leave here on the 30th for San Francisco. If your patient gets here before then, I will be glad to see him. Tell Mr. Chandler to allow himself three weeks for traveling time, testing, and exploratory operation and treatment. Assure the boy's father that there will be no fee for my services. Fraternally, Eli Strauss. Well? Tell him we'll go. You sure they wants to? I'm sure. Is the operation dangerous? No, 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 nothing like that. The operation itself is simple. How much do you figure for travel and expenses? Cost the three hundred dollars for the and the boy Chandler. Three hundred. Take a little time to raise that money. He doesn't have time, Chandler. Less than a week. Less than a week. I never figured on this. 
As they know, Chandler, I'm not a man of money, but I'll lend thee fifty dollars if it'll help. It's all I have. Thank you, Doctor, but no. Well, I've done my duty. And duty is always painful. But if this should change the mind, Chandler, let me know. Goodbye, Dini. Goodbye, Doctor. I offer you fellas fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? You're not serious. It ain't as easy to sell a horse as you think. Till you sell them, you've got to keep them and feed them, and that takes money. Well, I know your problem, sir, but I paid two hundred dollars for the horse and a hundred dollars for the saddle. That's had a lot of wear. There's still a lot left in it. Give you seventy-five dollars for the lot. Take it or leave it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> really? Excuse me, excuse me. Do you mind if I speak to you? Well, go ahead. Oh, not like this, Chandler. We're never going to get anywhere, either one of us, if we don't start being civil to each other. Let me buy you a drink. Hmm? That's always a good start. What's well, up to you, Chandler? You know, we can be friends or, well, all right, I'll have the drink. Good, good. Now, first off, I want to apologize for my sons for uh, that little visit they paid you. They're growing up, they can apologize for themselves. No, no, Tom is, uh, Tom's not man enough yet. Jeb is a little hard to control, but, you know, they're not bad boys, really. You don't want them a little headstrong, you know, the way kids are. Oh, Harry. Uh, Bates? Charlie, now, I, uh, I can't really blame you for having hard feelings. Now, plus what, uh, what the kids did. I played you a dirty turn back there in the alley, I admit it. But you can't blame a father for taking care of his own sons, now, can you? You know what I mean, being a father yourself. Yes, I think I do. Now, I worked hard all my life. I started off with 100 head of sheep, kept getting bigger and bigger. Now, I got a chance to, to really amount to something. You know, I could, I could add 2,000 head easy. Why don't you? Leonard's got me, got me all boxed in. Got hills on one side, Timberland on the other, and Leonard's on the other. And what does she want with that rundown farm? She wants it, that's reason enough. Maybe you could talk to her, huh? Might be some money in it for you. Quite a lot of money. Say 500. Well, what's on your mind? How would you like to come over and work for me? I've got a job. I'm offering you a better one. I'll just stay where I am. I don't think I made myself clear, Chandler. I never make empty threats, but I'm telling you that I'll stop at nothing and nothing will stop me to get what I want. <laughs> you haven't drunk yet. I'll buy my own. Sure, sure, Chandler.
before you come in, David, don't forget to bring in the cows. Would you like some coffee? No, thanks. I wish there was something I could say. I know. Chandler, I'd like to help. I know you're going to misunderstand this, but I could get a loan on the farm. No, thank you anyway. There must be something to do. There is. What? I've got to sell the dog. Oh, no, you can't. I don't want to. I know how much she means to the boy, but there's no other way. Well, there must be another way. Right now, Lance means more to the boy than his voice. Yes, right now. What about 10 years from now? 20 years from now? No. You see, I remember him as he was. I remember the last day. My company was riding off, and David came yelling down the road, Johnny, Johnny. That's what his mother used to call me. It's the last thing I ever heard him say. Suppose he never speaks. You've got to be prepared for it. He'll speak. I hope so, as much as you do. But you can't sell the dog, not on a 50-50 chance. You know how I feel about David. I'd give anything to hear him speak. That's why I'm telling you these things. I'm only thinking of what's good for him. I'm thinking of David, too. Only him. Then why don't you ask him? Because it's not his decision to make. It's mine. Well, then there's nothing more for me to say. Wait. Don't go. Not like this. Don't make it any worse. Try to understand. I do understand. No, no, you don't. You don't know how it is to go up and down the country to doctor after doctor, hearing the same thing, paralyzed, you'll never be able to speak. It's the first time I've been given any hope. I can't quit now. What if it fails? What do you do then? Start roaming and looking all over again? Just pick up roots whenever you hear of a new doctor who might help? When does it stop? When does it end? When the boy speaks. Well, as you say, he's your boy and it's your decision to make. When do you want to leave? Any time now. Tomorrow's as good a time as any. The sooner you go, the better. You hitch the horses in the morning and I'll drive you to the depot. Nights get cold in Minnesota. I'll pack some food and an extra blanket for the boy. Thank you. There's nothing to thank me for. You did a good job. The fences are up, fields are plowed, the barns repaired. I got more than my money's worth, Chandler. Much more. Light it. Light it. Son, what is it? What do you want? 
What is it? What's wrong? What is it? I don't know what you want. You only tell me. Chandler! Chandler! Where's the water coming? It's all right, son. You mustn't forget it. It, it. it was a long time ago. Is he all right? Oh, he finally went to sleep. A month's work, up in smoke. Maybe you should see your friend the sheriff. What can he do? He can't go into court without evidence. You should know that. Yes, I should. Maybe I ought to just give up and sell out to them. Don't do it. I don't think I've got much choice. Some things you learn to do without, but you can't farm without a barn. I'll need it to store the winter feed. I'll build you another. I thought you were leaving. 
Is that what you want? No. Then I'd like to stay. Uh, if it's all right with you. You see, I think you're right about the boy and the dog. There must be some other way. There has to be. I hope so. Can I fix you some coffee? <sighs> no, thanks. You better get some sleep. Well, you ought to, too. All right, I'll take the coffee. Never could sleep during the daytime. No, we got to repair this harness when we get time. You catch. Come here. That's better. Wrap it around the brake. Come on, Lance. I wonder what's keeping her. You better go tell her we're ready. What did he say? He says you're beautiful. Thank you, David. Yes. It's a lovely gown. You like it? It's beautiful. Thank you. I'd forgotten what it felt like to dress up. You should do it more often. Well, I didn't know whether I should or not. My bonnet is hopelessly out of date. Hats can never stay in style. But my father always said that a woman without a hat is only half dressed. I agree with your father. Thank you. David, in the back. So Lynette finally found herself a ma'am. Look at the birdies. Only one dollar, just think of it. Step up, folks, and I'll make a miraculous likeness of you and your loved ones. A likeness that will rival all the artists of Europe. Step up, folks. Would you like your picture today? Oh, don't be nervous, little lady. I'll take your picture. It's strong, Mrs. Ainsley. Take a strong wind to break this one. Good for rain or shine. Oh, it's you. Got some silver of yours. Fifteen dollars worth. Mm -hmm. uh, where's your stock of trousers? Over there on the counter. Thank you. Come on, David. Linda, I almost didn't recognize you. Such a pretty dress, even if I didn't sell it to you. I'll be with you in a minute. Don't you have any without tassel? They're making them all with tassels, Mrs. Ainsley. If you don't like them, you can cut them off. I suppose so. Uh, you think about it. Gorman. Oh, who knows? All right, Sonny, are you buying or looking? Huh? What'll be, Sonny? Chocolate? Hard candy? Don't make up your mind, Sonny. The chocolate is short and sweet. The hard candy lasts longer. 
Oh, in a minute you'll be sorry you didn't listen to me. <laughs> well, I was the same when I was a little boy. <laughs> Sit down, Joe. These look good and strong. They all look strong to me, Lena. You never called me that before. Matter of fact, I was getting tired of all that man talk. You made me sound ten years older than I am, and no gentleman would do that. Do you mind? No. No, I just mentioned it. Come here, David. Try these on. There, behind this counter. Why, Lynette, it's been ages. Nobody ever sees you anymore. Well, just the other day at the Union League Social, everybody was talking about you, and nobody knew what to say. What have you been doing with yourself out on that farm? What? Your package, Mrs. Ainsley. Oh. Excuse me. Oh, you, your purse. You, you forgot your purse, Mrs. Ainsley. Just oh. a minute. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take a picture of you and your loved ones. Well, let's look at the new picture taking. Why didn't you have a picture taken, Leonard, with your pretty dress and bonnet? Well, what would I do with it? Look at it now and then. In ten years from now, you know what you look like today. Go on, take a picture while I fit the boy's trousers. Go on. Come on, now, uh, let's see. Now, uh, but these pants fit like a glove. Step up and for one dollar I'll take a picture that will rival the genius of Leonardo. Only one dollar, just think of it. Step up, folks, and I'll take a miraculous likeness of you and your loved ones. A likeness that will rival all the artists of Europe. Step up, folks. Go ahead, Lena. I'm nervous. Oh, don't be nervous, little lady. Uh, sit right down here and do as I tell you, and you'll have a memento that will last you for a lifetime. There. Now, now get comfortable and, and sit back and put your head against this. There you are, my dear. Now, sir, will you step in and uh, uh, take off your hat, please? It's, it's better with your hat off. And, and uh, if you just hold that pose for a minute now. Now, let me see. Oh, yes, that's delightful. You smile a little, please, lady. A smile, and you smile, too. Thank you very much. Oh, that's very good. Yes, indeed it is. Now, are we ready? All right. Just let me see. Your name's Chandler. I know all about you. You live in the limit. My father says you ain't got no tongue. Is that right? That's him. That's what I was telling you about. When he says he ain't got no tongue, Open your mouth. Let's see if you got a tongue. All right, Johnny. Open your mouth. If he won't open his mouth, pinch him. That'll make him open it. Look, he ain't even alive. He don't even yell when you pinch him. Watch. Take him in and clean him up. Get him another pair of trousers. I'll be right back. Mr. Bates. Huh? Oh, it's you. Deal me out. I, I want to talk to you about the dog. Do you still want to buy him? Huh? Maybe yes, maybe no. How much you want for him? 300. Three hundred. That's a little high, ain't it? Tell you what, I'll give you one hundred and fifty. I'm not bargaining, Mr. Bates. It's three hundred. Do you want him or don't you? Two hundred. Now wait a minute. You are the hardest man I ever dealt with. All right. You got yourself a deal. Where is he? I'll, I'll bring him tomorrow afternoon. If it's all right with you. Sure. And I'd like to have my money now. What kind of a deal is this you're trying to pull? You want the money now, but I don't get the dog now? That's the deal. You just have to trust me. All right. I'll be waiting. 
Thank you. Deal me in, gentlemen. Are you going to tell him? No, now's not the time. When it's all over, I'll tell him. He'll understand better then. I hope so. I was wondering if it wouldn't be better for you to go to Minnesota with David. Why? Oh, I just think you'd feel better with you, and I might never come back, but you will. Besides, I got to get the barn up, the wheat needs harvesting, and you never know what the brothers are going to do. Will you, Leonard? If that's the way you want it. Yes, it is, Leonard. David, we can't take him with us. Hey, he's not going to back out now. Not after all the trouble we went through. They wouldn't do that to us, would they, son? Look, I brought the bag of candy for the trip. This guy, David? <laughs> he's a fine lad. The next time I see thee, they won't be shaking thy head. You tell me. Yes. All right, folks, all aboard. We're ready to go. All right. Come here, David. All aboard. Son, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. Sometimes we have to do things that we don't want to do. Uh. Going to be a good boy? Yes. Come on. Up you go. Lilith, take care of yourself. You too. You'll be all right, David. Lilith, I wanted to say that... All right, look! Well, I... I... Well, Lilith, I wanted to say... David, bye. for you. I was beginning to think you was pulling my leg. Didn't know if you was joking or not. I see you wasn't. Tell me, how come you changed your mind about selling him? I guess the price was right. Now you're talking my language. I always said there was a price on anything. Here's your dog. Come here, boy. Go on, Lance. Go to him. 
Come on, boy. We're going to make a champion out of you. Come on now. Get over here. Come on, Lance. Here. Yeah. Tomorrow, Dr. Strauss operates. The more I see of the doctor, the more I like him. He and David are the best of friends, and the doctor is teaching him to play chess. The game is beyond me. Yesterday, one of the parents brought a puppy up to one of the children, and David saw them together. It was one of the worst moments of the whole trip. I pray we've done the right thing. Minnesota. Read it to me, Doctor. The operation is over. They've just started treatment. It's too early to tell anything yet, but Dr. Strauss says that everything went exactly as he expected. He says that we should know in a day or two. I hope I'm not reading anything into how he said it. But he sounded very optimistic. He says that we will be able to leave here in three days on the afternoon coach. I hope this letter reaches you before we do. David is anxious to get back, and I am too. Love, Lilith. How do you feel?
want me to tell him? It might be easier. No, I'll do it. To Davis was there was no other way. It didn't work out, but there was the chance I had to take. And if, well, if you'd known about Lance, you you just wouldn't have gone through it. I know, I, I know, I lied to you. You can hate me, and it's all right. You see, I know what Lance meant to you. He meant a great deal to me, David. David. Don't you understand? I had to. I had to. David. David. David, I, I had to. Honest. Honest, I did. Chandler. About the dog Lance I sold you. Dog? Mongrel's more like it. Well, he ain't worth a plug copper as a dog. Well, he's a one-man dog, and I should have known better. It's the way these mongrels are. Mr. Bates, I don't know how, but I'll, I'll work out something for you. But I have to have the dog back. I'd be glad to give him back, believe me, but I ain't got him anymore. Where is he? I got rid of him. He wouldn't work the sheep, wouldn't work a single command. All he'd do is crawl around his belly and whine. First time I ever judged wrong. Where is he, Bates? I told you I got rid of him. How? Lost him in a poker game. Who to? Harry Burley. Lost him with a good hand, too. Full house, three aces up. I don't know why, but Burley always wanted that dog since I first got him. Well, we had us this game. Thank you, Bates. Want to know something? He won't work for Burley, either. Well, look, you can see for yourself. <laughs> There, what'd I tell you? Come on! Come on! Come on! With a gun? Burley's got him. It's the only thing he understands is a gun. I know Harry Burley, John. He never does anything without a reason. Well, I'm going to find out what his reason is. You're his reason. Ever since you came here, you've been in his way. Without you, I might have given up the farm, and now he'd have it all. He doesn't want Lance. He wants you. Please, Lance. Listen to me, John. What good will you be to the boy dead? Give me the gun, John. It has nothing to do with you. Yes, it does. I'm part of this now. You made me part of it. You can't just come into my life and go right out of it. I won't let you. Let me go, Lance. John, what is it? 
Is it pride? Then I'll go to the Burleys, because I have no pride anymore. I don't care about the farm. You and David are all I care about. And that's got to mean something to you. It means a great deal in it. There's no other way. John! John! David! David, wait. David. Look at me. I made a mistake and I'm sorry. I'll get your dog back. No, no, I'm not lying. You stay here. You understand? I'm getting your dog back. Come on, Jeff. Just like Pop said he would. Good. Come on. Company come in, Pop. Company uh, was expected, wasn't it? This way, Pop. Let him come. No, 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 no. Not yet. Let's show the Rebel a little hospitality, hmm? This ain't no time for talking, Pop. Let's do what we gotta do and get it over no, with. No, there's no time to be losing your head either. Uh, just leave me alone with him. You boys, uh, wait in the storeroom there. Go on. Go on, go on. Both of you. Pop, go on. Tom, go on. Come in, come in. Door's open. Well, Chandler. Come in. Come on in. Make yourself at home. Sit down. 
How about drink? No, thank you. Don't mind if I do, hmm? Pour it for me. Your jugs are kind of hard to handle with this clipped wing of mine. Where's my dog? Your dog? You ain't accusing us of stealing him, are you? Hit it I once before. A dog thief is just as bad as a horse thief in sheep country. You know that, don't you? All right, yours, Burley. I want him back. I'll pay you some way. I'll, I'll work out a deal with you. But I've got to have that dog. Well, I, I see you're ready to talk sense. How about Leonard? Too bad about her barn burning. Let's talk about the dog. That's all I came to talk about. Sure, sure, sure. <coughs> My boys really took a liking to him. He's just like one of the family. You're kind of touchy about the girl, ain't you? I hear a lot of talk in town about you two. What kind of talk? I don't know what kind would you expect. Handsome fella like yourself, pretty girl like Lynnett, living way out there, away from everybody and everything. No, you can't stop people from talking, can you, Chandler? Not if they've got dirty minds. You know, I, I don't figure you, Chandler. You've given me nothing but trouble from the very first. Now you're asking for favors. Then it was getting ready to see this whole thing my way. She's just about ready to give up her place when... It's nothing you... to do with her. I came here asking a favor. Oh, sure, I know. You know, this got nothing at all to do with her. This, this is for your kid, the dummy. Isn't that right, Chandler? That's right. See, I know how you feel. I got boys myself, remember? Of course, uh, what you want with a hound like that beats me, because he, he's nothing but a one-man dog. He's like Bates said, no good. you work for me. Well, take him. Take him. He's yours. You mean it? And now you can get out of here, Chandler. Your dog's down in the tool shed. Take him and get out of here. You needn't look so surprised. This is more than you ever did for me or my sons. Go on, get out of here, Chandler, before I change my mind. Thank you. You might be out of your mind, but I'm not. We're going to shoot a dog thief. How'd you like that? Hmm? Jeb, you go down by the sheep pen. Tom, I want you to go down by the haystack. Now, don't shoot till he comes out of the shed. And remember what I told you. We're killing a dog thief. You got that straight, both of you? We got it. What are you sitting there for? Come on, get out of here, like I told you.
Say it. Say it again. Say it. Say it. You, you said it. Say it again. You can do it. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you! Listen to me, Pop, just this once. You gotta listen to me. Get away, get away, you coward. I'm gonna kill you, Chandler. Don't come any closer, Burley. I'm warning you. You dirty s. Thank you. 